Tonight, continuing coverage of the biggest news since the end of the War for Independence, the inauguration of the country's first president. But already some are asking, will George Washington be just another monarch? April 30th, 1789. From the World News Headquarters of PresidentialHistory.com, this is Presidential History News with Mike Purdy. Good evening, and welcome to Presidential History News. I'm Mike Purdy. Just hours ago, huge crowds gathered in New York City to witness the inauguration of General George Washington. The excitement has been building up to this day for some time. Since Washington left Mount Vernon over a week ago, phrases like His Excellency the President General have been trending all along his route from Virginia to New York. We now go live to Julie Anderson, who's on the scene in the capital city. Julie? Thank you, Mike. As you can see, fireworks are going off over New York tonight to celebrate the new president. Earlier in the day, more than 10,000 people packed the streets to witness Washington's inauguration. The crowd was so thick that after the ceremony, Washington's carriage couldn't even get through. The new president had to walk seven blocks to a church service. Thank you for that report, Julie. Now, some people are criticizing Robert Livingston, the New York judge who administered the oath of office. Afterward, Livingston turned to the crowd and shouted, Long live George Washington. Uh, that's just a couple of words away from the all too familiar long live the king. Is anybody asking if we've been through eight years of war just to trade one monarch for another? Actually, Mike, everyone I've talked to seems to trust Washington completely. After all, this is the man who voluntarily resigned his commission as commander-in-chief of the Continental Army. Even though he has overwhelming support, he was actually reluctant to consider running for president. I think this is the type of man that people feel they can trust to run the new country without trying to take too much power. Well, it sounds like Washington has built up a lot of credibility with the public. What about the reaction to the new constitution that was ratified last year? Do people think it has a better chance of success than the Articles of Confederation? Most people I've talked to, Mike, seem to support the new constitution. You see, it has exactly what the Articles of Confederation were missing. A stronger federal government with the power to levy taxes? No, Mike. George Washington. The Constitution certainly improves on the Articles of the Confederation, but I believe a lot of the optimism we've seen here today is because of Washington himself. There are even reports that the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia actually created the Office of the Presidency with Washington in mind. Thank you, Julie. Well, I think it's safe to say that George Washington is probably the most popular man in America today. Everyone is looking forward to seeing what he does as president and the direction of this brand new country in the years ahead. For Presidential History News, I'm Mike Purdy.